Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Mr. McKeon. Uh, my colleagues, uh, Mr. Lobsack, uh, Ms. Hooley, and others have uh, made, I think, the strong point that uh, environmental and green building uh, is something that is good for the students. It really is an educational matter, not just an energy matter. Uh, in uh, several years ago, 26 of us uh, introduced the School Building Enhancement Act after learning that energy costs were the second highest operating expenditure in schools after personnel costs. Uh, at the time, schools were paying about $6 billion annually. That's now risen to about $8 billion annually. And according to the EPA, 30 percent of the energy consumed in school buildings is used unnecessarily or inefficiently. So uh, let's just say you had an extra $2 billion in savings. Uh, that could go for uh, teachers, uh, textbooks, uh, any number of educational things. Um, our bill would assist schools in making improvements by providing grants to states and school systems for energy efficiency upgrades. Uh, these improvements would follow the guidelines of the Energy Smart Schools Program of the Department of Energy and the Energy Star School Districts Program of the EPA. Uh, there are plenty of examples where this works. Uh, Summerfield Elementary School in my home state of New Jersey saved the uh, typical uh, 30 percent, which means $41,000 annually in their pockets for educational use. Um, and there are health and other direct educational benefits as well. Uh, daylighting, for example, can dramatically decrease the use of energy in schools. And according to a study of the uh, uh, National Renewable Energy Laboratory, students who learn in daylit classrooms have 5 to 14 percent better test scores, if you like test scores. Um, uh, than those who learn in non-daylit schools. So there's a direct educational advantage. So I uh, encourage my uh, colleagues here on the committee to uh, join with Mr. Ehlers, Mr. Davis, Mr. Grijalva, Ms. Clark, Mr. Hare, Mr. Payne, uh, and others in uh, supporting this. Furthermore, having heard my colleagues talk about school construction from the point of view of of, of realistic wages, prevailing wages, um, I'd be remiss if I didn't uh, say a word or two uh, about uh, Davis Bacon. And their very, I must say with respect, their short-sighted way of trying to save money by cutting the wages of school construction workers. Yes, this goes back to the Depression era, and I'm proud to say that my father was very much involved in establishing wage standards back then. Uh, the Davis Bacon uh, prevailing wage legislation has not only saved taxpayers money, it has produced better work, and you get more for your, for your dollar. Um, you know, a dozen states at one time or another have repealed their own prevailing wage laws, and the picture is not pretty. The repeal in those states has resulted in lower wages, a race to the bottom, fewer benefits for workers, uh, reduction or elimination of apprenticeship training. Now, let me emphasize that. Through Davis-Bacon, you get better work. Apprenticeship programs work. You, you don't have to do the job over again um, because you have skilled workers. Uh, it declines the quality of the workforce. Uh, there were increased injuries on the job and lower productivity. In other words, less for the taxpayer dollar. Um, so, uh, you know, my colleagues, Mr. Uh, Bustani, Mr. King, uh, want to save taxpayer money. Uh, so do we. And it has been demonstrated, and they'll provide studies. I'm happy to provide studies, too, of what has happened in states where they've cut prevailing wage. I'm happy to provide studies, some of which were done in my own uh, congressional district, that show that um, Davis-Bacon is good. And it's not about organizing, although you know, union organizing is not such a bad thing, Mr. King. Um, but that is not what it's about. Uh, in fact, according to the Department of Labor, 72 percent of the wage determinations, in other words, how they calculate prevailing wage uh, in the most recent uh, uh, determination that I could find, which was a uh, half dozen years ago, were based on non-union scales of labor. So, no, this is not uh, – sure, unions like this. But it is not primarily a union um, uh, 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 effort. The, the union wage prevails only if the Department of Labor uh, determines that, it, that that is the 
prevailing wage uh, in the region. Um, again, I will emphasize productivity is improved when Davis-Bacon is applied. And with that, I uh, yield back my time. Thank you.